so I finally got around to exploring the newest biome in Valheim, the Mistlands. Before the update, there were five fleshed out biomes in Valheim, each with its own boss to defeat. But after months of anticipation, Iron Gate released the sixth biome to the game, complete with a new boss, as well as tons of new weapons, craftables, enemies, and more. And it was well worth the wait. But before I got anywhere near the Mistlands, there were a few last minute preparations to be made back home. For the most part, I tried to avoid spoilers for what lay within the new biome, but what I did know was that there was probably going to be a significant increase in difficulty, and my wolf armour probably wasn't going to cut it. So I said goodbye to the fur and got myself all decked out in the finest padded armour, except for the helmet, the flower crown stays. Next, I had to set up the first half of my Mistlands portal. This would allow me to travel back to base when I needed to rest or replenish my food and tools. It would also act as a quick way back to the Mistlands if things didn't go so well. The only thing left to do now was to grab the item dropped when I defeated the previous boss, Yagluth. This item tends to be something that will help you out in the next biome, a key or a special tool for example. The only problem was, I couldn't find this thing anywhere. In this world, I'd only defeated Yaglef while in multiplayer, and that was quite a while ago. And I'm not pointing any fingers, but... Criminal scum! So after I picked up a few more totems, summoned and defeated Yaglef again, I finally got my hands on the special item, Three Torn Spirits, which unlocked a new buildable item, the Wisp Fountain. I headed back to base and built the new fountain, which quickly attracted some little glowy wisps. As sweet as they were, I had places to be. I used one of the wisps to craft a wisp light, which I assumed would help guide me through the misty mistlands. Now that I was finally ready, I headed off to bed before setting sail for the new biome the next morning. I knew the mistlands would be found close to the edge of the world, which I hadn't really explored much of in this world seed. I decided to head south with the wind and set off on my way. I sailed and sailed and sailed, all the way through the day and the night and the next day, until I finally spotted my first bit of the new biome appear in the distance. As I got closer, it became clear that these were just a few rocks. I did, however, manage to spot a new creature, a hare, which I shot from the boat. But, unfortunately, before I was able to claim its new drops, they sadly sank out of reach. I tried out my new wisp light and investigated a few more of the other islands. On one of them, I came across a couple of friendly, um, I'm just going to call them dwarves. One had a crossbow and the other had a lantern on a stick. I attempted to initiate a trade, but my attempts to communicate were unsuccessful. I also found some new mushrooms, which can restore a new stat type. Off in the boat again, I continued east into the sea, away from this little group of islands. Eventually, I saw some lights in the distance. It was a cute little dock. Once parked up, I ventured in to say hello to the dwarfs there. There wasn't much to the boathouse, but one of the mages did seem to be guarding a mysterious looking box. I was tempted to try and destroy it to see if there was anything useful inside, but I thought it might be best not to annoy these little guys. For one, I didn't want to get a bad reputation among the dwarfs, and also, who knows what damage that lantern stick could do. This area also seemed to be another small group of Missland Islands but I thought it would be best to build a portal so that I could rest up back at home before continuing on. Hopefully if I built the portal nearby, the dwarves might help to defend it against whatever the Mistlands might hold. The dwarves' ward was preventing me from building too close to the dockhouse, so I had to venture a bit further into the mist than I would like. I came across a large ribcage of petrified bone, which I tried to mine, but unfortunately it was too hard for my iron pickaxe. Just within the mist, I could hear something scuttering about. I went to investigate and came across a new creature, and not a friendly one, called a seeker. I retreated out of the water and began to shoot at it. I was doing decent damage, but when I saw one of the dwarves swimming over to help me out, I thought I'd leave them to it. Maybe if they died, they'd drop something cool. But the dwarf made short work of the seeker, using its lantern stick not only to heal itself, but also to blow the seeker to pieces before casually swimming back to the dockhouse. I built a portal on top of the ribcage and headed through it back to base before returning the next morning, fully rested and with everything repaired. I destroyed the portal and continued east to search for a nice big area of mistlands. Not long after, I found just what I was looking for, 
and jumped off the boat to explore. Already, I could tell that this area of Mislands was much more substantial, and bordered with a swamp and plains, where I could more safely build my portal home. As I headed towards the plains, where I planned to build a portal, I finally decided to chop down one of these Yggdrasil shoots to see what I got. I actually just counted, and I came within metres of like 10 of these trees before I thought, hey, maybe that'll do something in this game where literally everything can be used to craft something. But anyway. I came across another hare and managed to pick up its droppings this time, and continued collecting the new type of wood. But my chopping soon attracted the attention of a seeker, and before I knew it, I was in the middle of a full-out fueling seeker war. I did my best to help the fueling allies, but they didn't really stand much for chance, and it was left to me to solo the three remaining seeker, including this two-star seeker. I took down the two regular seeker pretty easily, but the two-star boy was a different story altogether. It didn't help that I wasn't rested, which meant that my stamina was regenerating very slowly. I also remembered at this point that I hadn't placed a portal yet, so if I died, it would be a very long way back to get my stuff. I slowly chipped away at its HP, trying to keep my distance and dodge its attacks. Finally, I took it down, and before I could get myself into any more trouble, I swam over to the plains to quickly build a portal home. After a good night's sleep, I continued exploring and resource gathering, and quickly came across another new mushroom, the Uten Puff, which can be used to make the honey glazed chicken, definitely worth collecting. I spotted a dwarven looking building in the distance, and started to head towards it around the cove. But navigating across this terrain wasn't so simple, and involved a lot of jumping, which was using up stamina like crazy. But I must say, I really enjoyed jumping up and down the cliffs, and off into the mists, and how different it was exploring the mistlands compared to the other biomes in the game. As I was doing a lot of jumping, and swimming, when the jumping didn't go so well, I was prioritising stamina-rich foods over health-rich foods. This meant that I was rather on the squishy side, but also meant that I wouldn't have to rest as often while exploring. And this was working great, until... I looked up to see a fireball hurling towards me. Luckily, as I was in the water, the burning didn't do very much damage. I looked up to see where the fireball had come from, and let me tell you, as soon as I saw that thing come out the mist, I had some flashback to the tripods from War of the Worlds. Oh my gosh, that film terrified me as a kid. And I just ran for it. As I tried to get away, I noticed a little message that I thought might be from one of the dwarves. Hopefully it would distract whatever this thing was so I could get away. I tugged behind a rock and tried to hide, but it was no use. I got out my bow and landed a few shots, but it wasn't doing very much damage. I ran back to where I thought the dwarf might be. Maybe it would help me out like with the seeker earlier. But before I could have a proper look, the Jarl sent its babies after me. I ran up the cliff to avoid the babies, but as I tried to regenerate my stamina, the Jarl opened fire. I retreated further up the cliff until I reached the edge. And I was pretty well trapped. I dodged one of its fire blasts and rolled right off the cliff to my death. I suppose it was going to happen sometime. When I awoke at home, I made sure to eat a combination of health and stamina rich foods to make me a bit less squishy. I also made the short trip to the starting stones to change my forsaken power to Yaglyphs, which would drastically reduce fire damage from the Jarl. I decided to travel light so that I could move quickly and be able to easily pick up all of my stuff from my body. As soon as I hit the miss, I realised I hadn't made an extra wisp light but there was no time to turn back now. I had to make sure I had all my stuff before the no skill drain effect ran out. I blindly followed the minimap back towards the area it had marked my death. As soon as I could hear the Arl's rumble, I activated Yaglov's power to protect myself from its fire attacks. With the varying height of the terrain, it took a while to find my body amongst the rocks. While looking around for it, I noticed the Yarl begin to approach, but I decided to hold my nerve and hope that it wouldn't see me. Luckily, it didn't, and I was able to sneak away to my body. Once I picked everything up, it was time for some revenge. I jumped up the cliff I'd been stuck on and began to fire arrows at the Jarl. I managed to dodge most of its fire attacks, and even when I was hit, Yaglyph's power was making a real difference to the damage I was taking. When it was over me, one of my arrows hit its belly, and I noticed it took way more damage here. From then on, just a few shots to the belly were enough to finish the Arl off. 
I raced off after whatever it might have dropped, almost to my death, but instead came across a bunch of its babies. I managed to fight them off and picked up some blood clots they dropped, which knowing this game, I'm kind of surprised didn't unlock a recipe for a blood clot frappuccino or something. Eugen was also waiting for me at the bottom of the cliff, and then I realised that it had been his message I'd seen during the Jarl attack, not a dwarf. I became further frustrated with Hugin when he insulted my crafting skills, as he instructed me to use what I assumed was some kind of dwarven tool to unlock magic juice within the Yggdrasil roots. He had at least guided me to where the Jarl had dropped its bile bag. I continued along the valley when I was attacked by more of the ticks. Luckily, these guys just bumped straight off my shield, and each other, and I was able to take them down pretty easily. Further on, I came across some ancient armour, which was also too hard for my iron pickaxe. I had left some black metal smelting away back at base, so on my next trip back I would hopefully be able to get the newest black metal pickaxe and start chipping away at all these new resources. I decided to make a fire to top up my rested buff and see me through till morning. Today I wanted to try and find out how big this area of Mislands was, so I started heading along its northern border with the plains. I was just minding my own business, chasing after this one star here, when I came across this. No way was I getting on the wrong side of these guys. Once I reached the sea, I headed south, resource gathering as I went. After a while, I came across a little dwarven looking structure that seemed to be occupied by a seeker. I rested up and ate some more food before heading over. I took out the seeker and headed in to investigate, before realising there was another seeker to deal with. It seemed like this was once an area for mining. I tried digging in the pit in the centre, but only came across more stone. Next, I tried mining one of the blocks, and after some persistence, was rewarded with a new building material, black marble. I broke open one of the crates to find soft tissue, and another one of the marble blocks but decided, since it had damaged my pickaxe so much already, I would leave the rest for now. Just over the ridge, I came across a dwarven building, like the one I'd seen earlier in the distance. In my eagerness to get to it, I jumped straight into a pretty deep ditch. Very embarrassing. <laughs> I headed inside and up the stairs. These dwarves also had a crate of components. Maybe this was the special tool that Hugo had mentioned. Whatever it was, the dwarf seemed pretty uneasy with me being so near to it. I was very much outnumbered here, and I'd seen what those shiny sticks could do, so I decided to leave it for now, and continued on my way. Just around the corner, I saw a light in the distance, with some stairs leading into a cave. When I got closer, I saw that there were a few seeker guarding the entrance, including a purple, higher level seeker. I started shooting at it, but it really didn't seem to like that. I retreated back and popped a health potion before continuing to fire on the seeker. Luckily, it looked like it couldn't get to me, and I was able to take it out pretty quickly. The next seeker was also struggling to get to me, but the third and final one very nearly managed to kill me. But thankfully, I prevailed. I built a fire to rest up before heading up the stairs and into the infested mine. Once inside, I listened for a moment, to see if there were any nearby enemies. There didn't seem to be anything too close, but there were some strange glowing eggs up ahead. I've watched enough films and played enough video games to know that as soon as I got close enough, they'd all hatch and smother me to death, so I thought I'd try to take them out from afar first. Out hatched a baby seeker, which gave me a new food item, royal jelly but my shooting soon attracted some ticks, and the mummy seeker. Once I'd killed all the seeker young, I ventured down into one of the tunnels. The mine was a bit of a maze, with many paths to follow, many blocked passages, and many dead ends. I broke down one of these blocked passages, and a couple of ticks jumped at me. One of them got past my shield and staggered me and began to drain my HP rather rapidly. It took me a moment to process what was going on, but eventually I came to and rolled the tick off me. I collected up my blood and headed on. I soon came across a beefier, scarier sounding seeker, a seeker soldier. 
which I was doing very little damage to. Fortunately for me, it seemed to be stuck and couldn't reach me, so I continued to slowly chip away at it with my bow. But this thing took a lot of arrows, and my bow was getting pretty close to breaking, so I decided to try out some other weapons. I tried giving it a poke with my act gear, which needless to say, it didn't enjoy. Next, I tried my sword and shield. I managed to block the first attack, but missed the second. But I'd done enough. I picked up its mandible as my prize and headed into the next room, where I found a little display case and something inside. A seal breaker fragment. I found another in the hall next door. Two of nine? Hmm. My inventory at this point was pretty packed, and if I wanted to pick up these probably unimportant pink crystals, I needed to get rid of some stuff. So I decided to try and use up the use bombs I'd brought along. And these were actually extremely effective. I was definitely stocking up on some more on my next trip back to base. Once I'd used up all my use bombs, I was able to pick up a black core and unlock the new black forge. I collected up two more from earlier before coming across a deep misty pit of seeker. I managed to take out one of the seeker inside before I slipped and fell in. And there wasn't even anything cool down here for my troubles. At this point, I had pretty much run out of good food choices, meaning I was currently rather squishy, so I decided to make my way back to the portal for a resupply. On the way, I came across another dwarven building, which I'd somewhat accidentally lured a seeker to. The three dwarves took out the seeker with ease, but in the process, they'd all got stuck in the water. It suddenly crossed my mind that this might be my chance to break open the component crate at the top of the tower without getting caught. I ran up the stairs, but unfortunately, there was still a mage guarding it. Ugh, maybe next time. Night had now fallen, and it was definitely time to get home and get rested. I ran through the mistlands and into the plains towards the river, when out of nowhere appeared the stealthiest locks ever. I tried to swim for it, but it munched me. Ugh. I made the sad, but luckily short walk back to get my stuff, being careful to avoid the locks, and headed straight back through the portal. I decided to try and cook up some of the new meat I'd collected from the seeker and hare, which actually made for pretty good health-rich food items once cooked. I emptied out my inventory at the storehouse, and crafted a ton of ooze bombs, before jumping back through the portal. I headed back to the dwarven tower from yesterday, and found that there was an infested mine just next door. One of the seeker guarding the mine rushed me, and I went flying back towards the tower. But it seemed like the dwarves were taking care of it for me, and I was able to head straight into the mine with no trouble. Once in, I headed down some spiral stairs, and took out the seeker babies at the bottom. I could hear that there were a fair few seeker in the next room, and maybe even a soldier or two. I decided to put some of my new ooze bombs to the test to weaken them before heading in. The ooze bombs were great against the seeker as before, but hardly did anything to the seeker soldiers, so I retreated back towards the stairs. The soldiers both followed me, but luckily they couldn't get up the tight staircase. I tried to fight them on the stairs, but it wasn't very successful. I was fumbling with my weapons when a seeker and its baby came and gave me a shot and a nasty nip. I retreated back up the stairs to heal, but was pursued by a seeker to my death. Luckily my stuff was easy to retrieve just inside the entrance to the mine. I took out the seeker that killed me and noticed a hole in the floor into where the two soldiers were. I chucked down a couple of ooze bombs, but soon changed to my trusty bow and arrow. I continued to chip away at the soldiers and noticed that just like the Jarl, they received way more damage when you hit the red bits so I tried to aim for those areas. While repositioning, I fell into the hole, and was booted by one of the soldiers, thankfully towards the stairs out. After some more fumbling, I managed to get back up the stairs and out of reach, and not long after, I defeated them both. I snuck into the large hall they were guarding, which had some more eggs hanging from the ceiling. I found a couple of seeker at the end of the hall, and a third seal breaker fragment. Further down the hall, there was a dwarven door, which I opened to find a pit full of seeker. I chucked down a couple of ooze bombs, but a few of them managed to fly out. 
I retreated back into the hall and a star seeker followed me. I tried to keep my distance and roll dodge away from its attacks. Once I'd taken it down, I continued across the pit and wandered through tunnel after tunnel. But apart from all the seeker, there wasn't much to find. So I decided to head back to the entrance and out. I was pretty sure that I'd explored all of this area of Mislands now, which had turned out to be pretty small. I figured it was about time to move on and find a larger Mislands, with more infested mines and maybe a runestone that could lead me to the new boss. I started heading back to the portal, when suddenly I heard a yarl in the distance, back from where I'd come from. I headed towards the sound to find it attacking the Dwarven Tower from earlier. The mages didn't seem to need any help taking it down, but much of the tower's interior had been damaged in the attack. I ran upstairs to find that the component crate had also been destroyed, revealing the dwarven extractor that had been inside. I picked up the extractor and unlocked the sap extractor recipe. The dwarves didn't seem to mind me taking the extractor, but I felt bad leaving them empty handed. The sap extractor needed five black metal ingots to build. I knew I now had a bunch of black metal back at base, but as you can't transport metals through portals, I would have to either make the long trip home by boat to collect it, or find some black metal scraps here and smelt them. This reminded me that I still hadn't got round to crafting the upgraded pickaxe, so I headed back to base, collecting some more black marble on the way, and used the black metal I'd left smelting to finally craft one. I also used some of the black marble I'd collected to build the new cauldron improvement, the mortar and pestle, which unlocked several new recipes for some of the best food items currently in the game. I was about to destroy the portal and head off in my ship, when I thought I'd quickly put my new pickaxe to the test on the ancient armour I'd marked on my map earlier, not far from the portal. I headed to the armour and used my new pickaxe. The armour broke up into scraps of iron, which would actually come in useful, since I could use the iron to build a blast furnace to smelt some black metal. I ran back to the portal with my scrap iron and used some certainly cores and stone from my base to build a smelter. While I was waiting for the scrap iron to smelt, I headed further into the plains to find some black metal scrap, which had dropped by fueling. I only needed five black metal to build the sap extractor, but I grabbed a bit more just in case I wanted to build another. Once back, I used the newly smelted iron to build a blast furnace. I rested up back at base before collecting the newly smelted black iron the next morning. I then destroyed the portal and headed back to my ship and on to find a new area of Mislands. I continued through the day and night until I saw some lights from a dwarven dock in the distance. I set up a new portal nearby and rested up back at base before heading off to explore this new area. I soon came across another skeleton like I'd seen when I first started exploring the Mislands, but now I had my black metal pickaxe. Once I defeated the ticks inside, I picked away at the skeleton and got some black marble. I continued on and saw a blue light from an infested mine ahead, but before I knew it, I was surrounded by Seeker. I fought them off and ventured into the infested mine. I found a fourth seal breaker fragment right inside the entrance hall, and in the next room, at the end of a bridge, there was a wall with a dwarven rune on it. I went over to investigate and found that it was a secret door. I pushed it open and found a couple of black cores and treasure chests. Inside the chests were potions, coins, and sausages. Hmm, turns out I probably should have been bartering with sausages all this time, not fish. I continued through the rest of the mine, but after hordes of seeker, ticks, and dead end after dead end, there was nothing else to find, except the exit, which was actually pretty tricky. Once out, I headed towards a glowing Yggdrasil root that I could stick my sap extractor in. I just had to quickly grab some wood to build it, what could possibly go wrong? I jumped up the ridge and started chopping down an Yggdrasil root when a seeker lunged at me and sent me flying off the cliff to my death. Getting my stuff back wasn't the easiest either. The seeker had shot my body just into the swamp. I snuck around the edge towards my body, being careful not to bring too much attention to myself. I picked up my stuff and made a run for it. I got back to chopping and finally had enough to build a workbench and my new sap extractor. After a couple of minutes, some sap popped out, which gave me a bunch of new recipes, including an eight-tier refinery. I decided to leave the sap to collect and headed back to the petrified bone to mine some more black marble 
before heading back to base to drop it off. I now had enough black marble and black core to build the new forge, and its first upgrade, which unlocked several new weapons, including an arbalest, spear, and a two-handed sword. Of course, the very first thing I crafted was this super cute lantern. Unfortunately, I was pretty resource poor, so I couldn't really afford anything else for the time being. My next job was to build the new IT refinery, but I needed one more sap first. So I fixed up my weapons and headed back through the portal towards where the sap collector was. On my way, I came across several new features I hadn't seen before. The remnants of an ancient bridge, high above the mist. A huge Uten skull. And a new type of dwarven tower, with a spiral staircase all the way up to the roof. I looked out from the top of the tower and could see a very faint blue light in the mist, a bit to the south. Maybe another infested mine. I headed towards it and found a derelict dwarven building. Suddenly, out of the mist, a seeker jumped out at me. The used bombs were a great help against the group, and I slowly managed to weaken them and take them out one by one. I investigated the dwarven building to find a staircase leading down into an infested mine. I quickly rested up before heading inside. Just next to the entrance seemed to be a large hall, full of several seeker and at least one seeker soldier which was luckily held back by the stringy stuff. After a few ooze bombs, I broke the gooey barrier and began to shoot at the soldier. I led it onto a bridge where I hoped it wouldn't reach me and continued to chip away at its HP while battling off the odd inquisitive seeker. Eventually, I managed to take it out just as it began to advance across the bridge to me. I snuck a peek inside the hall to find to my horror two more soldier seekers including one with a star. I decided to try and use the stealthy approach, but was soon spotted. I ran around the room, trying to see if there was a boss stone or seal breaker fragment I could quickly grab, but soon realized I was in serious danger. I made a run back for the entrance as the horde pursued. My stamina gave out just meters from the exit, but thankfully I was able to make it out safely. I continued on towards the sap extractor and collected 10 tankards of sap, more than enough to build a new IT refinery, so I headed back towards the portal. As I got closer, I could hear the distant rumbling of a yarl. It sounded like it was firing at something, maybe another dwarven tower. I followed the sound and soon found the yarl. I managed to get its health down pretty quickly by directing arrows at its underbelly, but since I wasn't rested, my stamina was regenerating very slowly. I saw the Yarl release some ticks from its belly, so I retreated back to try and recover some stamina. But the ticks soon found me, and started to drain my HP. I knocked one off, but another replaced it. And yeah. But little did I know, my pain was far from over. I rested and ate before heading back to the portal to find... It was unconnected. Thank you so much for watching. Keep an eye out for the next part of my Mistlands adventure, hopefully coming soon. If you enjoyed the video, please show your support by leaving a like, commenting down below, or sharing with a friend. It all really helps. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And if you can't wait till then, check out the 7 day Valheim challenge I did. But until the next one, have a great day.